Patriots GFO. What's the the roundup or whatever? Am I getting that wrong? Come Bear. on, dude. Huh? Bear. Bayer. So since this is reef beef where we don't bullshit about stuff, you don't dip all the time, right? Do you want me to not bullshit? <laughs> um, I mean, that's no, up to you. Get... Do, your, do your clients want to know you just kind of phone it in sometimes instead of doing yeah. the real job? Well, no, because I here's say, some I used some... live rock and some yeah. corals that are infested with scum. Yeah. And here's the a picture of John Wayne tank. Gacy. The live rock in your tank has been used 10 times. To kill all <laughs> people like John Wayne Gacy. Yes. This live rock came out from under my floorboards. <laughs> okay. Since you're a big baby, I don't dip all the time. Yeah. But I also know that I got stuff in my tank already. But I also know, um, my hair is freaking crazy. Ain't oh, nobody yeah. give a shit about your hair. In a hat. Um, uh, I know what I have in my tank, and I know what people generally have around me, or when I'm getting corals from them, or from a store, um, or online. Uh, usually, I only buy from people I kind of trust, but uh, I I expect that I will have to treat my tank from red bugs from time to time. Uh -huh. I expect that I still have some vestige of acroweeding flatworms in my tank, although it seems to be really low right now. Um, and part of me, and some people are going to hate this, but, you know, unless you are committed to being super rigorous about your quarantine, I think you can, I, you know, I'm always going to suggest that you quarantine, but I'm also going to suggest that once you've got some stuff under your belt, and you know the risk you're taking. If you don't quarantine, you don't quarantine. But you got to know the risk you're taking. It's the it's when people don't quarantine and they go, ah, ah, and it's like, well, you didn't quarantine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you, like you're, you're it's like your Russian roulette. Like it's all it's all fine yeah. until you hit the chamber. I quarantined hardcore for a few years. I really did. And Wait, did you feel like maybe the squeeze one worth the juice? Yeah, the squeeze is not worth the juice after three years of being really rigorous about quarantining and then getting infections of acro eating flatworms anyway. It was like, okay, I mean, well. I think at a bare minimum, just a little, like a, a one minute freshwater swish. I mean, that's not hard. Depends on the coral. I won't do that to an acro. Okay, piss it off too much. Yeah, yeah acros uh, sometimes in freshwater get really upset. So I tend not to do that. Uh, but if it's the two a two little fishies revive. Yeah. Like I'll use revive. Uh, I usually do. I have it on hand because sometimes I dip. Um, I, you know, when I pull corals out, it I kinda, dip. Kind of smells got, like floor cleaner. It is. Uh, shh. <laughs> you know, I'm, Julian will stab you. <laughs> he's like, he's pouring fabulosa in containers. <laughs> <laughs> we like pull back the curtain jewel and it's like hey 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 uh yeah no it does it smells pretty good uh yeah and it doesn't seem to really piss off the corals all that much at all so i like it and um uh but i'll fresh water you know if something's got a softy with flatworms like a leather or sarco or yeah napthy or whatever shloop, wooga, 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 yeah 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 how it goes um so yeah i guess for me it's all about um What's the risk reward ratio that I'm willing to take? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I'd be interested in seeing a study done on how many people QT, you know, crazily, not crazily, you know, um, uh, um, emphatically. I try not to say religiously because I'm trying, I don't want to say that. Um, <laughs> who, who are really strict quarantine people and uh, the incidence of infections that they get. Yeah. Because, and, and I will say too, as a professional, I mean, that, that you should do a little dip of the coral. Fish-wise, man, you really should quarantine because you can just bomb out your whole tank easily with it. But it's like, it, it is a lot of work. And I yeah. think if a lot of people aren't, you know, what we say online, but it's like, are you really though? What's that, that meme with Thor where it's like, but are you really? But are you is really? It really? I think it's John Wayne Gacy and not Thor. Are you really? Right. It, wait, he I'm was gonna, dressed up like a clown at a kid's I'm gonna, party. I'm going to eat you. No, he didn't eat people. He just killed them. Yeah, uh, eating people was Ed Gein. No, Ed Gein didn't Dahmer. eat people. It was Dahmer. Who? Yeah, Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. No, 
know your psychos know your psychos don't want to get them wrong yeah um yeah quarantining fish is a really interesting one because i think i see a bunch of people doing it badly and then animals suffer i yeah. would really really like it if um if the industry got together and decided let's try to sell the healthiest animals uh and quarantine and they were quarantined at their store beforehand it would make everything I, more expensive but i i think that's but and cool. i get it too because i've known wholesalers that said they were doing that weren't really doing that or did it for a while in the same thing as you were like jesus christ this is a lot of work <laughs> yeah oh no i want to I, I should clarify i never take something and go oh bloop into the tank that yeah. never happened well, fish wise fish wise even, right even fish wise or coral wise nothing just okay. arrives and in it goes it's yeah. It all gets examined, you know, uh, you know, if I'm getting a fish, I've, I've examined the fish because I buy most of my fish at a store and I know how long the fish has been there. And I love that store. If it's eating, yeah, aquatic collection in Hayward, they put the date right on there. So I'll be walking around and if it's, but the there, date, if the date the, was yesterday, I'm not buying that fish. Yeah. Hey, if uh, you're the, to the viewers, if you're, if you're in Rich's area, we'll put a link to that store in the, what do they call it? The show description. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put yeah. the links down below and then you point. Down below. You point. Yeah. Down below. Down below. Hey. Down below, yeah. 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 See? Yeah, see. see? We're talking about reef stuff today. <laughs> There's links for you. Um yeah. so I'll look at the fish and then uh, you know, if it's a mail order fish, usually I know where it's coming from. So I know if it's been QT'd or if it's eating. But even when it comes, I'll put it in in a in a glass or uh, something I can see sideways, and I'll take a good look at the fish before it goes anywhere. Because if yeah. it's got anything obvious, I want to do something about that. And all the corals will get a look, and I usually remove them from whatever substrate they've come on anyway. Oh um, yeah. So I'll take a look, and if I see anything weird, I'll I'll dip it then. Uh, that, but I'm usually a, doing a visual check before. Yeah. But that's a big thing, and I'm, I'm I would imagine that a fair amount of our our viewership are, are um I would imagine at this point that most of our viewership is at a higher level aquarist. Maybe yeah. I would love it for some lower level aquarist eventually to to be attracted to our podcast if they're so not. Call it less experienced rather than lower level because okay, you're making true. it sound like a, a subcontinent class system. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> troglodyte. <laughs> No, no, for sure. Less experience. But but so that's the thing where you buy an acro and you looked at it in the store like, oh, cool. And then you get it home. Don't put the frag plug in your tank, like try to gingerly break it off of there and just get the coral in there. Or just cut it off and then try to grow another piece out of that. Or just throw a brick at it. That's just throw a brick at it. That's another name for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and it, it's also interesting to point out, I think, um, that the difference between an experienced person and a not experienced person, when you're learning anything, you learn all of these rules, right? All the rules that you should follow. And then as you get experienced, you realize that there are rules of thumb and yeah. that there are, there are reasons good and bad and practical and not practical to break those rules of thumb. So that is kind of funny. In the beginning, you do none of them because you don't know them. And then yeah. you're told to do all these things and you do it all rigorously and then they dissolve away and you do some of them or a few of them or, you know. As as the squeeze produces less and less juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stop the squeeze. Yeah. That means. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of, I, I, but I, I think, I think, I think most of the time a lot of this stuff should be done at a different level than the hobbyist because mm -hmm. expecting you know it's it's so weird when we talk about the hobby and we want to grow it and should grow and we should be growing it it's like you're never going to grow the hobby if you're telling somebody hey you know this 30 gallon tank you bet you set up you need another one that you're only going to use sometimes do you know what the funny thing is what you just said like i don't know if i'm in and again put comments like throw tomatoes at me if you think this I don't know if I give a shit about growing the hobby. The hobby is just is what it is. Like, why do you got to force? I don't get it. Because uh, people want more business and they have the idea that a growing hobby brings more business in. But the problem is um, 
it's like when I was working in trade shows and, and we would try to get leads for the company we were performing for, right? We could get 10,000 leads, but if they weren't qualified, who cares, right? So it's kind of like if, if you bring someone into the hobby who's new and they're in it for 18 months and then they leave, it's such a fleeting bump of, yeah. of, of goodness for the hobby. Whereas if you, if you bring people in in a sustainable way that's going to keep them over time, it seems to be better, in my opinion. I don't want quick growth. I want good growth over time. It's, Let you me, know. there was, a, so I spent a, a little more than a decade in retail in like six different stores all across from Dallas all the way to Houston. That's and, from Dallas to Houston. Yeah. I know I should have said like from San Francisco to Maine. Like, you, you, yeah. <laughs> I never left Texas. Yeah, I didn't, we, <laughs> we know. No, but so so a lot of experience in a lot of different stores. But the thing, so what you said kind of paralleled to this. So I always had bosses that just wanted, oh, you didn't sell the, this off the counter. Yeah. You didn't sell that. But I was a real like back to basics person. Like any problem you had could probably just fix with good maintenance and water changes. But the bosses, you know, you come in, you have a problem to the store. It's like, we got a bottle of shit to fix it. And I completely don't agree with that. Um, but so what you were saying, so like it was always good for me as a salesman to just tell someone the truth, whether like at the moment it made me money or not. Yeah. But we, we always kept those clients for years and years because yeah. they trusted me so much because I didn't bullshit them right. versus some dumbass comes in and, well, let me not say dumbass because they just don't know. And you go take their money and sell them shit they don't need. And then they're like, screw that place. And they never come back. And yeah. like, well, I, I got their money. Yeah, but they'll never be back again. And meanwhile, I've made more money from them for a five-year relationship of just giving them the right, you know, that kind of thing. I agree 73%. Oh, man. How could I get that higher? Those oh, rookie numbers. Just by asking. Uh, 90, can I, can I get 90, 94%. You can't, you can't go like above a hundred percent for you. No. 110% pure no. adrenaline. No. Yeah. You know, I want to grow. I'd like the hobby to be around forever, but I don't want it to be built on a foundation that's weak. And I think, I think not, I think selling people products ends up, I mean, it's fine to have kind of recipes at the very, very beginning to get people going, but you also kind of got to tell them there's more than a recipe coming up. This is, you know, you, you either, either hire Ben or learn it yourself because you can't basically, yeah. you, can't, you can't, you're not going to be successful if you don't figure out how to do it. Oh, but before I forget, I do want to point out something that I think is really important about quarantine. Uh-huh. If I get an animal that needs to be quarantined, I can set up a tank for quarantine immediately. Yeah. You know, it, 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 I have the capacity for it. If I decide to, I've got any of these four tanks can be isolated and become a quarantine tank. Yeah. I've got a bunch of tanks outside. I've got, I've got pumps and stuff, apparently, because I never sell anything. I've got everything I need to set up a QT right now. Um, yeah. you know, and I would take, and, you know, take rock out of that tank. Take water. water out of that system boom it's an instant quarantine tank so yeah. so we're not just saying quarantine is stupid we're saying no. you better be prepared if you need it to do it yeah if you are going to roll the dice and not quarantine yeah 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 absolutely yeah. okay i was feeling guilty about something i was about to stop you anyways because i started thinking we were talking about growing the hobby and i was like this doesn't have this doesn't have dick to do with anything we're talking about. You know, it's, about. it's hilarious because as soon as you brought it up, I was thinking that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is so bad because I'm like, squirrel. Yeah. No, I think that's kind of the joy. I kind of like I'm it. noticing that we got off track. That means we're fucked. <laughs> we are so fucked. It is really fun to watch you squirrel and go, I guess we're going to talk about that now. Yeah. But now I'm like, wait, Richard, we're off track. We're off track. What else is there to say about quarantine? Um. Not a lot. I mean, there's a bunch of different methods, but tell us in the comments, like how you quarantine, how you dip. We're not, I mean, I wasn't necessarily talking about fish, but like, you know, well, let's you talk about, about dipping corals. Yeah, actually you were talking about dipping. You weren't talking about quarantining at all. I expanded that. It's my apologies, Benjamin. Actually, I was, I was talking about skinny dipping. Were you? I do that all the time. With your corals. 
in the bathtub with Bayer. Yes. <laughs> now that we've come full circle. I mean, is there anything practical to say? Yeah, I've got two practical things to say about dipping, right? Make sure you are measuring the amount of dip and the amount of water you are using correctly because it's really easy to overdose. And an overdose yeah. dip can be really bad. Yeah. And then the other thing is related, really make sure you're doing the timing properly. Yeah. Right? Uh, if, it's five, if it's 10 minutes, fucking do 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and then I have a bucket of fresh tank water that I immediately pull the dip thing out of and I rinse it in there and I rinse it in there. And then I put it in another container of tank water to recover before I decide to plant it or put it anywhere else. Okay. So it gets, so there's several stages to it for me. Yeah. I was just, I was just laughing because I could see like your face on a t-shirt and it said, if it's 10 minutes to do it fucking 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> More t-shirts. No, but, but the other thing too that makes my forehead you, look huge. Okay, there. After you, after you dip too, don't forget, like, look in the water and see if there was anything to be seen. Oh, of course, that's totally right. Inspect your corals. Uh, oh, and then also learn the difference between just some goo that was on the coral and what a pest looks like. Um, yeah. What's oh, uh, related but not really story. When we're training people to be able to identify uh, coral planula, you know, coral uh -huh. larvae. Um, we always say, you know, yes, you're going to, you're going to collect these out of the collection chamber and put them under the microscope, or, or you're going to look at them and you're going to come running in here telling me how many, how many planula you have. And I'm going to say, those are all snail poop. Yeah. And they go, yeah. no, that's not going to happen. I go, okay. And then okay. a week later, it's like, look at, look at, it's like, yeah, that's all snail poop. Put it on the microscope. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh. like, oh. What we're saying too, someone could dip a coral and then not know what like gamerous or amphipods look like and like, yeah. oh, there was some bad guys trying to come into my tank. And it's like, yeah. well, it's going to be good and bad that fall off of the. Yeah. Remember when we didn't quarantine at all because we thought all life was good life? That was yesterday. Give me the freshest live rock you can because whatever's on it, I want. No, you Dude, I kind of I kind of shudder to think of back when we used to. So when I first got into the hobby was uh 1995 was the first time I was working professionally. And back then it was Marshall Island. Do you yeah. remember Marshall Island? It I had do. the it had the, the thickest and darkest purple coralline algae. It was great. It was, crazy. It was great. The thickest but yeah, all the crap that would come in on it though. I remember when I was getting back into it in the early 2000s that uh, um you know it was all about live live rock. Why'd your camera yeah. go away? Your camera, there we go. Okay. Because it told me I had 20% battery life. Ah, okay. Um, so when I was getting into the hobby uh, in the early 2000s, probably 2000, when I was getting back into it, um, it was all about live, live rock. Yeah. And I remember getting some live, live rock and then watching over six months how, how it progressed and then everything on it died, you know? And so I was like, oh, I, I actually don't... <laughs> the, talk about lemons that... Uh, talk about squeezing that doesn't produce juice. I was like, yeah. why are we, there's bad things that come on on this stuff. And, and it, you know, it's all going to settle anyway. It's not, this is not adding anything to my experience. So yeah. then I just started, um, when I would got rock, I would want to cure it anyway. So I'd put it into some tub somewhere and leave it for a month or whatever. Um, and then I found stores that were curing it. And it was like, ah, that's what I want. And that's, so you that's know, I got to make a list because we could do a cool show out of, of things Things that used to be that people either don't like. I remember when you sold someone a, a reef tank, like live rock used to be one of the biggest expensive things that you were spending on the tank. And like, I don't think people would understand that nowadays. Wow. Yeah. So if you, dear listener, watcher, peoples, um, the John Wayne Gacy's of the reefing world, if you, <laughs> the John Wayne Gacy of our viewership, of our viewer, that's, that's redundant. <laughs> um, uh, that's oxymoronic. It's the same thing. Um, cause I love our viewers and we include ourselves with you. Um, if you, uh, things we used to do that we don't do anymore, put that in the comments. Cause that, that sounds like a great show.